Alright, I finally caved. One of my friends told me that the West Somerset Railway was going for 80% off in a sale. I saw that the price was only $7.19 NZD and thought that was an absolute steal. So here we go. My two cents on the West Somerset Railway add-on in Train Sim World 4, following its big update. I'm not just reviewing the free update, but the route as a whole. Although, in saying that, the update is only free for people who already had the route in the first place, and I've had no experience with any previous versions of the WSR. The West Somerset Railway runs for 20.5 miles from Minehead to Bishop's Lydiard, and there's also a little used extension past Bishop's Lydiard that meets the main line at Norton Fitzwarren, near Taunton. Heritage operations commenced in 1976, three years after the branch's closure, and it's unique amongst TSW routes as it's the only heritage line we've currently got in the game, and I wouldn't mind seeing more routes of this nature. For instance, Germany's Molly Barn would make a fantastic TSW add-on, if Dovetail ever bothered to sort out the physics and simulation issues with steam locomotives, but clearly their priorities lie in other places. The Molly Barn is a 900mm gauge railway that runs over 15.4km of track from Bad Dolboran to Kulongspawn Vest, complete with Class 99-32 stroke steam locomotives, and even a street running section to boot. The TSW add-on was first released in May 2018, but I avoided buying it for the longest time because I didn't want a route that's mainly known for using steam locomotives in real life, that didn't include any steam locomotives. More recently, in February 2024, Dovetail released a big update for the route that brought it up to TSW4 standards, with upgrades including improved scenery around Minehead and Watchit, volumetric skies, whatever that means, TOD4 lighting and better foliage throughout the route. I can't really compare this updated version to the original as I never had the route prior to its big update. DTG also added a Steam Gala timetable, but they reused the four steam locomotive types we've already got in the game, instead of really putting in the effort to sort out the simulation issues and add more steam locomotives. Something like the Great Western Railway Manor Class 460, or the 260 Tender Engine number 9351, rebuilt from a 5100 class Large Prairie, would certainly help to sweeten the deal. I've already discussed my thoughts on the situation with steam locomotives in TSW. As such, I won't bore you by repeating them in this video, but all I'll say is that I think it's quite on the nose, if that's the right phrase, for DTG to release a big steam gala timetable for a heritage line right after putting steam locomotive development on indefinite hiatus. By default, the route only includes the Class 09 and a Class 47 diesel locomotives. The Class 33 Crompton and Class 52 Western are available as separately sold add-ons, normally costing 29 New Zealand dollars each, but I got the 33 for 1449 NZD and the 52 for 1159 in Dovetail's Festival of Rail Publisher sale. Ironically, they were more expensive than the route itself, but still a decent value compared to the normal add-on prices. Due to my limited knowledge and interest on the real Class 33, I won't be having an in-depth look at this locomotive, but I will bring her up again when I see fit. There's at least two more diesel locomotive types that I wouldn't mind seeing as add-ons for the West Somerset Railway in TSW. They are the Class 14 Teddy Bear and Class 35 Hymac, two additional examples of Western Region diesel hydraulics to complement the Class 52. Two Hymex, numbers D7017 and D7018, along with two teddy bears, numbers D9518 and D9526, are preserved on the WSR in real life. With her unique design featuring an 060 wheel arrangement and an off-centre cab, I think the Class 14 would be the most unusual British diesel in TSW if she was ever added to the game. At present, I think that honour goes to the Class 52, Class 08 or Class 20. I 
I think it's good to see some British diesels with pre-tops numbers in TSW, since they provide a refreshing change from all the BR Blue, Rail Freight and modern day diesel locomotives that we've got in the game, such as the Class 37 from the Tees Valley line and the overused Class 66 that appears on too many routes to mention here. For context, TOPS is an acronym for Total Operations Processing System, a computerised numbering system that British Rail introduced in 1968. And diesel locomotives that entered service before TOPS's launch had four digit numbers with a D prefix. They were eventually given TOPS designations and renumbered, with the first two or three digits of the unit's number being the class designation. For example, English Electric Type 3 number D6802, built in 1963, was eventually redesignated as Class 37 number 37102 in 1974, and she was renumbered a second time upon refurbishment in 1988, becoming Class 37 stroke 7 number 37712 in the process. This locomotive was eventually acquired by West Coast Railway Company in early 2008 but caught fire in November of that year, and has been in storage at Carnforth ever since. Now I just wish that we could get a 60s era British diesel route in TSW, or, at the very least, some more pre-tops diesel locomotives to use on Peak Forest, such as a backdated Class 31, for example, instead of only having pre-tops diesels in the preservation era. Just thinking back to the Class 52 for a moment, I reckon that what Dovetail should have done for the BR Blue reskin, instead of bundling it with a stupid gameplay pack that looks completely out of place on the modern image Great Western Express route, is include it with a route like Exeter to Plymouth and Paynton as it was in the 1970s. Either that, or a backdated and extended GWE. Although I want that extra livery for the Class 52, I absolutely refuse to buy the Diesel Legends of the Great Western add-on. It's interesting to note that there are at least four older TSW routes for which Dovetail made two additional locomotive add-ons and never anything more, instead relying on layers from other add-ons whenever they wanted more motive power on any given route. I wonder why Dovetail did it that way. Besides the West Somerset Railway, the other routes with two separately sold locomotive packs that came to mind are Ruasig Nord with the BR363 diesel and BR155 electric, Peninsula Corridor with the MP36PH-3C and MP15DC, and the Tees Valley line with the Class 31 and Class 20. Ironically, the Class 09 came to TSW before the Class 08. For context, the Class 09 is an 060 diesel shunter, of which 26 examples were originally built between 1959 and 1962. A further 12 were converted from Class 08 in 1992. The 09 was nowhere near as common as the 08, and differed from her more common cousin by way of a higher top speed of 27.5 miles per hour at the expense of a low attractive effort. Out of the 26 locomotives built as Class 09s, 11 of them have been preserved, and one of them, number D4107, or TOPS number 09019, is based on the West Somerset Railway in real life. Typically, the 09s were used on the southern region of British Railways, but some of them were also allocated to depots as far away as Cardiff Canton, Inverness, Edinburgh Haymarket, Carlisle Kingmore, and Wigan Springs Branch. Incidentally, D4107 was first allocated to Carlisle Upperby upon construction in 1961, and wasn't transferred to a southern region depot until 1968, when she moved to Hither Green. It's interesting to note that, while the 08 and 09 sounds are fairly similar to each other, the 09 has a horn instead of an air whistle, like the one installed on the Class 08. <laughs> 
As for the Class 47, this is one of the UK's signature diesel locomotives, alongside the Class 08, Class 37, Class 55 Deltic, and several others. A staggering 512 examples of this class were built by Brush Traction and BR's crew works between 1962 and 1968. The class has had a very long and successful service life, with an impressive 51 of them still being in service at the time of uploading. An additional 32 Class 47s are preserved, while 33 were rebuilt as Class 57s between 1998 and 2004, losing the old Saltzer Prime movers in favour of EMD engines. As for the remaining 396, they were sadly scrapped. One Class 47 is preserved at the West Somerset Railway in real life, namely D1661 North Star, but the model in TSW often shows other numbers besides D1661. The real North Star locomotive is painted in the old British Railway's two-tone green livery, complete with a restored four-digit header code box at each end. Historically, Diesel locomotives didn't receive high-intensity headlights until long after they lost their original BR Green livery. In the case of D1661, she entered service in 1965, and originally received the TOPS number 47077 in 1974, only to be renumbered as 47613 when she was fitted with electric train heating and a high-intensity headlight in 1984. Five years later, she was rebuilt with additional fuel tanks and renumbered again, becoming 47840 this time. Incredibly, she wasn't withdrawn until 2008, and has been based at Willerton on the WSR since 2009. Here's a comparison between the BR Green 47 and all the other variants of this class that we've got in TSW. Northern Trans Pennine includes a BR Blue variant without the high intensity headlight, while Just Trains' Blackpool Branches route includes three liveries, BR Blue, Large Logo Blue and Intercity Executive, all with high intensity headlights. As for rolling stock, the West Somerset Railway only comes with British Railways Mark I coaches, specifically the TSO and BSO variants, in either chocolate and cream or blood and custard liveries. No freight wagons are included with the route itself, and while the TSO and BSO are the most common Mark I variants on the WSR, I think DTG missed a trick by not including more variants, such as the BG full brake coach number W80736, which has been modified to carry wheelchairs. The West Somerset Railway is not an ideal route for those who prefer busier commuter lines over anything else. There are two variants of timetable mode for the WSR. One of them is a diesel gala with only 35 playable services in total, 9 for the Class 09 and 24 for the Class 47. The list of services for the Class 33 and Class 52 are largely identical to the 47's list. The Class 09's timetable starts with an empty stock move from Norton Fitzwarren to Bishop's Lydiard, then two passenger runs from Bishop's Lydiard to Minehead and back, complete with run-round moves at each end of the line. The 09's day ends with an empty run back to Norton Fitzwarren, and unfortunately, she doesn't do any shunting in the sidings along the WSR. Meanwhile, the Class 47 has four passenger runs in each direction over the full route, supplemented by occasional shunting work at both ends of the line. However, you don't get to take the 47 all the way to Norton Fitzwarren. As for the Steam Gala timetable, this has two playable services for the Class 09, 11 for the LNER A3 Pacific, number 60103, Flying Scotsman, 49 for the LMS Jubilee 460, 11 for the Fowler 4F 060, and 26 for the Stania 8F. Interestingly, 
The steam layers use the LMS Jubilee 460 and 8F280 locomotives from Peak Forest, instead of Spirit of Steam. I like how you've now got the opportunity to take the 4F on a decently long run, in stark contrast to the situation on Peak Forest, where you can only use this thing on shunting or banking duties. But someone pointed out, in a comment on one of my recent community posts, that it's annoying for people who have Spirit of Steam and not Peak Forest as well, since they won't be able to run the Steam services. Don't quote me on this, but apparently DTG's excuse was that the game is too broken to mix consists from both Steam era routes. If that's truly the case, then I'm not really surprised that Dovedale haven't bothered to fix it. Despite the route's relatively short length, it takes at least 1 hour and 20 minutes to complete a full run from Minehead to Bishop's Lydiard, or vice versa. Although trundling along at no more than 25 miles per hour can be a relaxing change from the likes of rushing it along at up to 80 miles per hour on the Harlem line, the WSR is a challenging route due to the often steep gradients. The steepest section is the 1 in 65 climb from Blue Anchor to Washford, and there's a long climb from Willerton to Crocom Heathfield that briefly reaches 1 in 68 just past the platform at Stogumba, but most of that section is between 1 in 80 and 1 in 100. Motive power from other add-ons also has layers in the Diesel Gala timetable, mainly from the Northern Trans Pennine and Tees Valley routes. To be fair, I'm aware of examples of the Class 20, 31, 37, 40, 45 and 101 that are preserved in real life, and I get that DTG were trying to make the rail scene look more varied. But, in my opinion, they should have just kept the rail scene to the Class 09, Class 33, Class 47 and Class 52, since those models were made specifically for this route, or added the extra layers in a separate timetable while, for the purists, keeping the original timetable that only has the diesels with pre-tops numbers, and adding the Class 14 and Class 35, for that matter. People have told me that the locomotives from Tees Valley and Northern Trans Pennine don't look out of place on the WSR, but I disagree. Although, to be fair, it's more tolerable than yet another rehash of the Class 66. The Class 150 Stroke 2 Sprinter, from Rivet Games' awful West Cornwall local add-on, also has a timetable mode layer on the WSR, but only to provide part of a shuttle service from Bishop's Lydiard to Taunton, which you can only drive as far as Norton Fitzwarren. I refuse to buy West Cornwall local for a variety of reasons, none of which I'll discuss here because this video isn't about Rivet rubbish. And because the Penzance to St. Austell route is set in the early 1990s, the 150 is only supplied in the regional railways livery, which doesn't match the time period of the WSR route. If you've got the Great Western Express add-on, the Class 43 HST will appear from time to time on the main line past Norton Fitzwarren. Despite only one Class 09 and one Class 47 being preserved on the WSR in real life, the in-game models will often spawn with numbers that are not D4107 or D1661, and I don't understand why they're set up this way. For example, one time I saw a Class 47 with the number D1895. In real life, D1895 was eventually renumbered as 47376, and is now preserved on the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway, but she is painted in the old Freightliner grey livery instead of BR two-tone green. I've seen the same issue with wrong numbers on the Class 52. 
In real life, one of the seven preserved westerns, namely D-1010 Western Campaigner, is based on the WSR. But I rarely, if ever, see the in-game Class 52 model with the number D-1010. I suppose you could pretend that these locomotives are just D-1661, D-4107, D-1010, D-6566 and D-6575 disguised as other classmates. But I don't agree with that idea because it's like you're essentially telling yourself that it's okay as a means to try and sidestep the problem. It's like that meme where the dog still goes, this is fine, as he's sitting in a burning room. One of the Class 52's scenarios depicts the locomotive hauling a mainline rail tour out of Minehead, and the specific locomotive should be D-1015 Western Champion. But it's not realistic because DTG used the default WSR coaches to represent the rail tour consist in game, despite the fact that these coaches are not mainline certified in real life. And it doesn't help that the Class 52 model in TSW is only meant to depict a D-1010 Western Campaigner, which isn't mainline certified. So it's unrealistic when it shows up as D-1015 Western Champion, because the real D-1015 is mainline certified, and has been fitted with a high intensity headlight hidden in the head coat boxes. Most of the time, I saw the Class 52 appearing without nameplates, for some reason, but they did appear one time when I did a light engine run from Willerton to Minehead. In that instance, the model appeared as D-1015 Western Champion. Don't even get me started on the inclusion of only one livery in the original Class 52 pack, namely BR Maroon with small yellow panels, when the 52 is actually carried several different liveries in real life, with one of the most unique being the Desert Sand livery, as seen on D-1000 Western Enterprise. Oh, and the letters on the number and nameplates aren't even 3D. Go figure. Despite the issues I have with the lack of additional liveries slash variants, and the unrealistic depiction of that mainline rail tour in this scenario, I still like the Class 52 Western diesel locomotive, largely because of her unique appearance and interesting history. But she feels like a caged animal when you can only run her on a line with a speed limit of 25 miles per hour. The same goes for the Class 33 and Class 47, but at least we've got other variants of the 47 to run at a decent speed on the Northern Trans Pennine and Blackpool routes. As one might expect from a locomotive designed primarily for shunting, the Class 09 is not very powerful with a power output of only 350 horsepower and a continuous tractive effort of 39.1 kilonewtons. One time, I tried playing the scenario called To the Beach, and this involved driving the Class 09 all the way from Bishop's Lydiard to Minehead while pulling five coaches. The locomotive was very slow off the mark and struggled to get above 15 miles per hour on the 1 in 100 climb out of Bishop's Lydiard. Because of the locomotive's limited power, it's just about impossible to run on time when you're trying to run a passenger service with this thing. Indeed, I was left running six minutes late by the time I got to Minehead. But the most annoying thing about driving the Class 09 is the brakes. They take far too long to release, and this means it's too easy to slow down far more than you were originally intending. I had a good first impression of the station details and thought that DTG did a decent job modelling all the Great Western style infrastructure, with Doniford Holt and Minehead being my favourite stations on the route. I also like this recreation of the former goods shed at Watchet, now converted into a boat museum, which looks like a spot-on recreation of its real-life counterpart. Speaking of don't let your kids watch it, you can walk from the station and up to the nearby harbour. Seeing all these questionably modelled boats reminds me of an old episode from season 3 of Chucklevision. Another thing I like is the functional turntable at Minehead, although the wheels on said turntable do not spin, and there's not enough space on either side to walk alongside your locomotive and return to the cab.
I don't like the lack of interior modelling on these buildings, a problem shared with even the more recent TSW routes like Mainz to Koblenz. And I don't like the flat 2D textures on several assets. These include the goods shed at Bishop's Lydiard, the phone box assets that I've seen a few times, some of the posters, this lamp room at Crocombe Heathfield, and even the signal box at Willerton. These flat textures are a dead giveaway for the age of this route, even though it mostly looks like something made after TSW3. Although it's not small, but rather far away, you can just about see Dunster Castle on the distant hills as you approach Dunster Station from the eastern end, or in other words, approaching Dunster when you're going towards Minehead. Annoyingly, you can't change the head codes on the Class 47, or the 52 for that matter. Instead, the models will just appear with random head codes which don't always match the type of service you're running. For example, light engine head codes should start with a 0, but I got one starting with a 2 when I played the preparation work scenario, and it's usually stopping passenger services whose head codes started with a 2. Oddly enough, the class 33 does have a head code box that can be changed by the player, as demonstrated here. Despite the issues, or as some people may see them, minor nitpicks, that I have with the West Somerset Railway in Trainsim World 4, I still think this version is a welcome improvement over the old, outdated, and inaccurate TS Classic version, which was released in November 2013 by the way. Timetable mode is one of my favourite features of TSW as a whole, and that's still the case here on the West Somerset Railway. I like being able to just load up the game, pick a locomotive, or multiple units, and a service, then take said motive power for a spin. There's no need to faff about in a scenario editor, or go through the tedious process of finding all the required add-ons if you want to download and play someone else's scenario, as is the case in TS Classic. Even though it's really easy to slag off Dovetail and third-party developers for their habit of really fixing problems with existing DLC, and preferring to release more new stuff instead, I will give DTG credit for coming back and giving the West Somerset Railway some long overdue TLC. Now if only they could do the same for all the other low quality routes that have essentially been left to rot over the years. Examples include the Long Island Railroad, Spirit of Steam, Arosa Line, Espan Vorarlberg, and especially the disastrous New York to Trenton. I'll end on a more positive note by saying that the West Somerset Railway certainly isn't bad for $7.